Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show, our professional of the year from Aletheia Marriage Counseling. Welcome once again, our dear friend, uh, Jim Ramsey, talking to us today here live on the podcast and Zoomcast. And again, he offers marriage counseling in Missoula and also virtually anywhere at this point. He has so many years of experience helping so many couples, individuals, uh, you know, really specializing with those couples and uh, here with marriage. We're talking today more about his counseling services, his Christian counseling, and all that. Serving Montana since 19, was it 79? Impressive. It's good to be on board with you. Oh, thank you. Same here. Aletheia Marriage Counseling.com. So it's A L E T H E I A, Marriage Counseling.com. Pleasure to have you back. Just overall, tell us a little bit about, you know, this work that you do as a counselor. I mean, pretty in depth stuff, right? Well, you know what? It's it's challenging and it's interesting and it's fun. Uh, I really enjoy what I do. It uh, there's some things that are simple, but they're very very difficult. You know, it it uh, there's some counterintuitive things, and once you understand and you see, then things get real easy. But it's hard to get over that hump. I find, especially for men, it's difficult. Yeah. Well, we're excited you're here and understanding the needs of both men and women and talking about this. Um, Speaking of need, um, let's get into marriages. And we're talking more today about um, marriages. And let's give us some feedback about what is most wife's greatest need from her husband? What would you say? Greatest need from husbands or greatest need who? What? Oh, yeah. What is most wife's greatest need from her husband? Oh, I got you. Okay. Well, I think that uh, this is a very, very important question because men think that my job is to take care of her and they have ideas about what that means, you know, and that's solving problems, providing for her financially, providing for her sexually, providing her material things. But the average guy has the hardest time providing what she needs the most. Uh, now, there's an uh, author that I like, he's deceased now, but Gary Smalley in one of his books says, you know, a woman wants a man's shoulder more than his mouth. And, and what she's saying, <laughs> what he's saying there is the average wife really doesn't want to hear so much input from him as to what she should do differently or how she could do things right, or how she could fix things. The, the more a man tries to help his wife, the more he offends her often. Mm-hmm. And, and then he gets angry because she starts reacting and not supposedly not appreciating or respecting him. But the whole thing starts with he doesn't really understand what her greatest needs are. So it should be that shoulder we're looking for. Yeah. Um, basically, when a woman is experiencing feelings, especially difficult feelings like fear or insecurity or worry or concern or any kind of a negative feeling, that is a very big thing to a woman. Now, it's not that big a thing to men because we learn how to just disassociate from it. You know, just think about something else, go do something else. Mm -hmm. But when a woman has emotional feelings, needs, emotional needs, the most important thing a man can do, a husband preferably, (laughs) there's some men that know how to do this and that's how they seduce women. But the husband needs to understand, I've got to ask her what's going on. I've got to show curiosity and interest and empathy. If I do that, if, I, every, if I'm paying attention and I ask about things and I actually mean it, I really want to know. Because at first she'll be in a state of shock and probably won't really want to give it mm-hmm. to you because she doesn't know if it's for real. But if you, if you can demonstrate, no, I really do want to know what's going on. And when she says something, you don't immediately jump on that and try to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> you just hear it. And, and that's a tricky thing because men, are wanting, they want to do, they want to fix, they want to do stuff. And for a man to just basically listen and understand, 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 and then you become more empathetic because you're understanding. Then you start uh, giving emotional support. That is really critical. Perfectly said. 
All right. Well, also, let's ask you about what changes need to occur in a marriage before wife really believes, uh, will really believe her husband loves her. What changes need to occur in a marriage before a wife will realize, before wife will really believe her husband loves her? <laughs> I'm trying to get this right. Yes. Yeah. And that's really important because it takes a while for her to really believe that he loves her. Mm-hmm. Because he's more, she's more inclined to think, well, he's attracted to my body. Or he he you know he likes to be proud of me or mm-hmm. he, he what is he he he's getting stuff out of this mm-hmm. but for her to feel like he really loves me is turning a very big corner mm-hmm. and then when you got that corner turned you got to continue to show in ways that she understands that he really loves her and the big thing is she needs to feel like she's absolutely number one in his life yeah. without him becoming a wuss. Mm-hmm. He's just a loving, caring man that just is delighted in you and wants to understand and support you and help you, and he's proud of you. You know, but it takes a while for a woman to believe that because she doesn't feel that way very much around men. Very true. I agree with you on that for sure. And uh, you're a man, but you're so well in tune with our emotions, our feelings, our thoughts, our wants, and desires, which is makes you our expert. Thank you. What would you say one of the most important benefits of putting your spouse first? We had an an interference here. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'll repeat the question. No problem. Um, One of the most important benefits of putting your spouse first. Well, the thing is, when, when you put your spouse first and they actually see it and feel it, if that spouse is a wife, they relax and they smile and they start becoming themselves. They start becoming much more happy, much more spontaneous, more fun loving, uh, when she knows that she is absolutely first and she's got a man that's going to take care of her emotionally as well as every other way, she just begins to be a happy lady. And you know what they say about happy wife? Happy life. And, and the average man has an unhappy wife a lot of the time, and he becomes more and more critical and demanding of her, which backfires. Everything backfires. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking at this from one side. Now, I, in another session, we'll talk about the other side of the coin, you know, what uh, women need to do differently. But right now I'm focusing on what a husband needs to do differently. He really needs to have her see by his behavior that he absolutely loves her. And there's nothing in his life more important to him than she is. Mm-hmm. I love that. Well, what would you say um, why so many husbands kind of shy away from giving their wives the special treatment they deserve? Well, Men become easily offended, and and the things that women do are very typical of uh, what offends a man. Uh, if she's critical, it offends him. If she's correcting what he's doing or not doing, it offends him. If she's offended by him, that offends him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anything negative that he's feeling, We're very sensitive. He, yeah. he takes it personally. Now, we yeah. talk about how sensitive women are, but on the other side of the coin, men are extremely sensitive, but they don't know it. Hmm. And their reaction makes the whole problem worse. So when he starts reacting, now he's being critical, he's trying to fix, he's this and that and the other. But this is a, a very central issue. And in our culture right now, both men and women tend to be self-centered and selfish. And and to really, truly try to understand this other person and try to take care of them emotionally and meet their needs is not natural for us. No. Our natural thing is go out and do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and so when a, when a man treats his wife right, so when you take care of the girl, you take care of her emotions, not by babying her or by fixing her or sending her off to a shrink or getting her medication. That's insulting. That's not what you do. You listen to her and you try to understand. And the more you listen, the more you don't say anything, but just keep understanding, listening. It comes into focus. Then, oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, that's what's been going on. And then you're looking at it like, wow, he cares. He's getting it. And that's that's magical. When a woman begins to feel like, not only he sees me, but he hears me, he understands me, then things get easier. And you keep building on that. And it does not make a man weird. It doesn't make him feminine. It makes him the gentle giant. He's a strong, masculine person, but he's sensitive to her. He understands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's just so important. 
Well, also, let's uh, continue the conversation here at Lathia Marriage um, uh, with James W. Ramsey. And uh, he's here from uh, Lathia Marriage Counseling Services. Just remind everyone the best ways we can contact you or call you. Would you mind sharing the number? Yeah, let's keep it simple. Call me on my phone. 406 370 3515. And if I'm not able to pick up, just leave your message. I'll get right back to you. Beautiful. Thank you again. All right. Let's continue down our list here. Um, what about, uh, what are some of the secondary benefits a man gains by earning his wife's love and security? Well, the biggest benefit is I've learned by experience through working with so many couples and also through my own marriages, you flat can't outgive a woman. If she's healthy, She'll always outgive you. They're 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 just by nature generous. Now there's erotic women that are not. There are different women that have problems. But a healthy woman, a normal healthy woman, is a very giving soul. She knows how to nurture. She knows how to help. She knows how to give. And so when you are kind to her and tune into what's going on and genuinely want to help, she's going to be so happy. She's going to want to take care of you. Mm-hmm. And so the more you take care of her, the more she takes care of you. And that's the definition of a good marriage. Perfect. And it goes round and round and round. That's right. Well, that's what we want, for sure. What about... It's, um, it's a nurturing cycle instead of a vicious cycle. Exactly. I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's the most important thing that you can give your wife when she really needs your help? Well, when she needs your help, first of all, you need to tune into what it is she needs. And yeah. to be careful that you don't assume what she needs and begin doing something before she's even asked you for it. Sometimes a guy is so anxious to help that he helps her in ways that complicate the whole issue. He's not really taking the time to hear it and understand it. So you, you taste, basically, your, her, the answer to her problems generally is not some suggestion. The answer to her emotional issues or frustrations or fer, fears or worries is mostly support. Yeah. And, and it's not the support of you instructing or coaching or telling her. It's a, it's a support of understanding and believing in her and and uh, just giving her emotional support. Let her handle it unless she asks for you to specifically do something. Got it. Yeah, because <clears throat> sometimes women don't like when men jump in without asking to do things. Do you, you understand that, right? Yep, that's what I find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's true, yeah. Too helpful we want, too helpful. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like no, no. <laughs> let's um, let's do this ourselves. I, I want to do it. I want to be. It's so funny, men and women. My goodness. Okay, hold on one second. We're gonna go now to our next question and talk about uh, what's the most important thing that a wife can do if she has insensitive an insensitive husband who lectures her all the time. <sighs> hmm. Well, the first thing is she's got to understand. That even though he sounds impatient, even though he sounds like he's superior, thinks he's superior to you, all the things that offend you, he is trying to help. Okay? So I think to say something like, honey, I, I know you love me, and I, I really know you want to help me, and I appreciate that. For him to feel appreciated, recognize that I'm trying to do something here, is big. That's a big thing. But then if she says, you know, hon, the biggest thing I need right now is to be able to talk some more about what's going on in my mind and my mm -hmm. heart for you to understand more deeply because there's some things I think they're not obvious. And if I can get those out and then you understand them, that's going to be the biggest help you could possibly give me right now because I feel alone and I'm kind of scared or whatever the feeling is. Once he understands that he's on your wavelength and he's yeah. doing something at work, then it feels good. Sure does. <laughs> Well, um, and it's very bad to be doing your best to help. And it feels like she's always emotionally angry or emotionally upset or it's like nothing I can do is good enough. That's what the man feels. Yeah. And it's not the truth, but he's on the wrong wavelength. I have a quick question about arguing. When couples do get into an altercation, right? We all say we don't like to argue. Uh, and one wants to be heard. The other wants to be heard. Is it better to walk away sometimes to calm down? Yes. In fact, uh, in the research, they find that when you start arguing, there's a point where you begin to get emotionally flooded. You're, you know, you're actually getting a little red in the face. You're, yeah. Your pulse rate's going up. It's getting more intense. And they say, when you're starting to flood, you need to stop. 
say, you know, honey, I think we're on a right subject is really important here. And I want to, I want to work through it with you, but I think I need to calm down. Maybe both of us just separate, do other things for a while. And maybe an hour or so later or later on today, we can get together and talk some more. But the second thing that they say is make sure you agree to have a time that you're going to talk again. Mm. And that you understand that when you talk again, you're going to talk about what triggered you, got you kind of upset in the previous conversation. Otherwise, if you're a man, you're thinking, I made point one and two, and I was in the process of making three when she freaked out. Mm-hmm. Now, she'll calm down, we can talk to you, and then I can get to three and four and get this over with. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the way a guy thinks. I'm right, and I can prove it. If you stop being so emotional, I can get something through with you, and we can work out, and we can go ahead. But we got to understand what triggered her and what triggered me that got us upset. That's the big thing to fix. Fix your emotions, then you're calm and you can talk about most anything. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for that. Let's also move on down and ask you about uh, what should a husband do when his wife is hurting, but won't take his advice or appreciate his insights and always reacts emotionally. Okay. Ooh. Now that's a very that's a very important question because men do feel that way. They feel like I'm trying to help you if you just pay attention. You mm-hmm. know, stop being so emotional. You know, <laughs> and what, what he's doing constantly is blaming her mm-hmm. from her perspective. You know, and so what what he needs to say is, "Honey, I'm sorry. I'm doing all the talking here, and you're the one that has the feelings. Talk to me. I'm going to shut up and listen to you." And I really want to understand fully what's going on here. And I don't care how long it takes. I love you, and I want to understand what's happening. And, I, and I'm not going to try to tell you anything. I'm just going to try to understand. First of all, she won't believe it. <laughs> because she wants to believe it. Yeah. But if you actually do that, and then as you start to see what's going on inside of her, show empathy. In other words, understanding. Wow, I didn't know that was what was going on. Yeah. That's really been eating your lunch, hasn't it, hon? I didn't realize that. Good night. That's been going on for two weeks. Wow. No wonder you've been upset. Okay. Now I'm on the way, like. Mm-hmm. And she starts. And the more, the more you get right on it, then the emotions start to flow. She'll probably cry. And you're going to say, what have I done now? Yeah. Well, what I've done now is I've tapped into her emotions, which is what she needs me to do. You pay big money to pay some shrink to do that. That's what a husband needs to do. Wow. Understand her, love her, let her talk about what's really going on emotionally, and and really understand it. It's it's not weird. It's it's human. We're just as men generally not in touch with it very much because we've been socialized away from it. Hmm. Um, let me ask. You know, nowadays we have a lot of same sex relationships, right? Uh, the LGBTQ plus community, and now we're really dealing with. women and women emotions, male and male emotions. Are you able to work with same-sex marriage uh, couples too? Yes, I can and do. Uh, Basically, where I can still fit in, even though I'm a heterosexual, is that we're talking about skills. Yes. We're talking about how to listen and how to talk, and that's relevant to anybody. But in the case of dealing with the other gender, you have a complication in that we're wired differently for the most part. Now, of course, there's the bell curve. Mm-hmm. There, there are feminine men and there are masculine women, for example. You know, yeah. the bell curve, but they're still a man. And they're still a woman unless they actually have sex change. And they're still a man or a woman. But they've just had appendages changed or taken off. You know, yeah. it, it's a tragic thing that's happening because we need to understand we are who we are, whether it's a masculine man or a feminine man, whether it's a masculine woman or a feminine woman. We have our both sides of our nature, but there's one that's, Predominant if we just relax and accept ourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we still have uh, just uh, only three minutes left in the show. Uh, is there anything else you want to give your advice and guidance on to our listeners today? Well, I think it all boils down to how what, what does love mean? Are you willing to prefer somebody over yourself? Are you willing to put them first? Are you really willing to give some time and attention? Because they're... They, deserve it, that you, you've married them, they're your spouse. The more the more you give of yourself to the other person, the more they give of themselves to you. But the more you walk away or the more you react or become angry or cold, it just makes everything a big mess. And uh, 
those those messes can be straightened out and you can learn how to do things properly and then things much much better for you oh and if someone wants to work with you anywhere around the world we could do so. It's telehealth, right? We call it, uh, you know, log in on that Zoom call or regular phone call you do, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Either way. Uh, you got my email address and my uh, website. Tell us again, okay. just in case the listeners are out there, can't see it. Well, AlethiaMarriageCounseling.com. And I do intensive weekends. So after we've done work online and taken an inventory to analyze your, your relationship, then... We have a time when we actually come to a beautiful lake in Montana. You spend the three days of the intensive weekend, or you spend a week here and go to the various parks and whatever. But we do both. But the intensive format is much more effective than seeing a therapist once a week for 50 minutes. Yeah. And we do the work ahead of time so you're prepared to really benefit from the intensive weekend. Beautiful. Thank you so much, and we appreciate you always being here today. Jim Ramsey, again, uh, thank you for your insights, and uh, wow, always learn a lot from you, and I hope our listeners are too, and of course, if you need help, reach out to him, and even suggest if you are, you know, in the dating phases, it's always good to start early, before the marriage happens, to start with counseling. Nothing wrong with that. Well, thank you again. Thank you again. You have a great day. And to all of our listeners and viewers, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more. Bye-bye, Jim. Enjoy the week. Bye-bye. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Of course my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat. Aren't there? Rear-facing, forward-facing? I think I have it right. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know. Know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat. Or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.